I want to talk to us about our redemption, that we are redeemed in Christ. Now, just to help us understand the, what is redemption? What is the Bible talking to us about when it says you have redemption? Christ is your redemption or we have, uh, we have redemption. What is the Bible talking about? Now, when you look at, when you study the Greek words used in the context of redemption, that means they are sometimes translated redeemed or redeem, redemption or ransomed or purchased, bought. And what God is telling us is this, that as a new creation, you are redeemed. That means you're no longer a slave to what was in the past. That is, you're no longer a slave. And we will look at some of the things we redeemed from. The Bible tells us very clearly. That means you're, you're no longer subject to that. The ransom has been paid. And right here in Ephesians 1, it tells us through his blood, his blood is the price that was offered to God, saying, here's the price, I want them free. Let us mention, what have we been redeemed from? First of all, we've been redeemed from Satan's dominion. Colossians 1, verse 13 and 14, it says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness, from the dominion of darkness, and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. He's saying, I'm taking you out of this kingdom, I'm putting you in my kingdom. So the kingdom of darkness has no right over the believer. And then he continues in verse 14, in whom we have redemption. So this is what redemption is about. Taken out of darkness, brought into light. Taken out of slavery, brought into a place where God wants us to be, in His kingdom. Secondly, because you are His redemption, you are redeemed by God, it automatically makes us the property of God, the one who paid the ransom. So you are God's property, you are God's purchased possession. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20, it says, you were bought at a price. That's the same idea of redemption, being bought at a price, being bought with a ransom. You were bought with a price, meaning you've now become the purchased property, the purchased possession, the one who bought you, Jesus Christ. Number three, the Bible also says we are redeemed from the curse of the law. Galatians 3 and verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What does that mean? That means we are redeemed both from the law, the weight of the law, the law itself, and all the curses that come because of the violation of the law. That means I'm no longer subject to the law, and neither am I subject to the curses that are being mentioned in the law for those who violate the law. And before we are redeemed from every lawless deed, Titus 2 and verse 14, Jesus gave himself for us. Why? That he might redeem us, that means bring us out of bondage, from every lawless deed. What lawless deed is holding you a captive? understand that the blood is announcing that you've been redeemed from it. That means there's no lawless deed, no sinful deed that can hold you as a believer. I want us to know that as believers, we can walk free from sin. We are also redeemed from this present evil age. Galatians 1, 3 and 4, it says that, verse 4, He gave Himself for our sins, Jesus, that He might deliver us or redeem us, set us free from this present evil age. That means the world doesn't have to dominate you. The influence of this world doesn't have to control you. We are redeemed from the fear of death. Hebrews 2 verse 14 and 15 says, Jesus destroyed the one who had the power of death Verse 15, and release those who through fear of death were in bondage all their lifetime. So as a believer, you don't have to fear death. Death is just taking us to the Lord. It's just getting boarding a flight to be with Him. You don't have to fear death. And of course, we want to live our life through to complete the work God has given to us. We want to live faithful lives 
finish the work he's given to us, strong, healthy lives, finish it. And once we're done, step on the flight. But you don't have to fear death. And the Bible says here, Jesus set us free from the fear of death. And lastly, the Bible also says in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, he's redeemed us from every aimless conduct, that is manner of life, that has been passed down from our forefathers. And of course, he's, Peter is writing to the Jews who were dispersed throughout parts of Asia at that time. And he's reminding them that through the blood, they've been redeemed, set free from whatever has been handed down, the aimless way of life. Now, it meant something to them, to those Jews, but it applies to all of us today in our own context. If the blood of Christ set them free from what was handed down from their forefathers, it set us free from what was handed down to us from our forefathers.